All right, friends, this is the last recording for the week of April 6th through 10th. This is for our third passage in this packet. It's a excerpt of a book called Endymion Spring by Matthew Skelton, and this is the reading for April 9th through 10th. April 9th through 10th, you will be reading this excerpt, and then you'll actually be writing a short narrative about what you think happens after this moment in the book. So I'm going to start reading now. Blake checked his watch, 36 minutes inside. He tried walking backwards now, tapping the books in reverse order to see if this could help pass the time. A series of stern-looking portraits glared down at him from the walls. Like magicians, they were dressed in dark capes and had sharp, pointy beards. Elaborate ruffs like squash chrysanthemums burst from their collars. The older men had jaded eyes and tortoise-like skin, but there were also a few pale-faced boys like himself. He glanced at their nameplates. Thomas Sternhold, 1587-1608. to Jeremiah Wood, 1534-1609. to Isaac Wilkes, 1616-1637. to Lucius St. Boniface de la Croix, 1599-1666. to Each man was holding a small book, and pointing to a relevant passage with a forefinger as though reminding future generations to remain to remain studious and well-behaved. Blake disregarded their frowns of disapproval and continued running his fingers along the boots, tapping the spines of the back of his knuckles. All of a sudden, he stopped. One of the volumes had struck him back, like a cat and had taken a playful swipe at his fingers and ducked back into hiding. He whisked his hand away as though stung. He looked at his fingers, but couldn't see anything unusual. They were smeared with dust, but there was no obvious mark or injury on his skin. Then he looked at the books, to see which one had leaped out at him. But they all seemed pretty ordinary, too. Just row upon row of crumbly old volumes, like toy soldiers in leather uniforms standing to attention. Except that one of them had tried to force its way into his hand. He sucked on his finger thoughtfully. A thin trail of blood like a paper cut was forming where the book had nicked his knuckle. All around him, the library was sleeping in the hot, still afternoon. Shafts of sunlight hung in the air, like dusty curtains and a clock ticked somewhere in the distance, a ponderous sound that seemed to slow down time. Small footsteps crept along the floorboards above. That was probably his sister, Duck, investigating upstairs, but no one else was around. Only Mephistopheles, the, the college cat, a sinewy black shadow with claws as sharp as pins, was sunbathing on a strip of carpet near the window, and he only cared about one thing, himself. As far as Blake could tell, he was entirely alone, apart that is from whatever was lurking on the shelf. Slowly, cautiously, he ran his fingers again along the books. Blake, his mother hissed. Her face had appeared from the office doorway. She was checking up on him as usual, just when he was at the point of disobeying her. Paula Richards, the librarian, stood behind her, smiling amiably. What did I tell you? His mother scolded him. You're not to touch the books. They're fragile, rare, and in some cases, extremely valuable. Now pick up that book carefully and go find your sister. I won't be much longer. Blake looked down, surprised. There in front of him, face down on the floor, was an unremarkable brown leather volume he hadn't noticed before. It seemed to be waiting for him to turn it over. So what happens next? It's up to you to write. So the assignment says, at the end of the passage from Endymion Spring, Blake seems to feel that the book is waiting for him to turn it over. What might happen if he does turn over the book? On the next page, write a narrative describing what happens when Blake turns the brown leather book over. Then here I have some things that your narrative should have. Make sure you know it has the length, details of the story, all that kind of stuff. Um, is the book on the floor the same one that swiped at him? I honestly don't know. I've never read this book, so I'm really curious to see how you guys finish this story. And I may even buy the book and see how well you guys align with what actually happens. Um, I hope this writing assignment is on the more fun side of things. I loved reading y'all's short stories at the beginning of the year, so I hope that you guys can be a bit creative with this. Um, if you listen to this, I'm really glad I could help you with the reading, and I cannot wait to see what you guys produce in your writing. Have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you for listening, and I love and miss you guys a lot.